This is the part four of the project where we will be continuing developing our IoT server by adding more enhanced features. The first video we will be creating rules for admin and non-admin users. So let's get started. So this is how our dashboard looks like. We would like to have one more section like this underneath over here in which uh, we would uh, have all the list of online users. And right next to the name of each online user, we would like to have one switch button for grant read permissions and the other for granting write permissions and also a touch button to apply the changes. So let's see how the code in our index.html will look like. From WinSCP, go to the remote server and open the index.html file under templates. Open with PyCharm. So here is the code for existing black box section where we have motion and a switch button to control the buzzer. Now let's copy and paste this whole div section and create another similar one. Another inner div to define the row. Another div to define everything as a central block. Then create a bootstrap primary panel where first of all we are going to add a heading for online users. And then we need to create a table class as list group and each row in the table will be defined as li giving it some list of necessary classes required. So at the leftmost of this row, we will display the name of the user as for example, let's say to hard code it initially as my own name. And on the rightmost, we would have two switch buttons with IDs as read user ID and write user ID. So this user ID will actually be replaced by the actual user ID, which will be given to this HTML code from the server. And we are initially setting both of the switch buttons to checked, like they will be on initially. Then the third will be a touch button with ID as access user ID. This will also be replaced by the user ID given from the server for that particular online user. So everything looks quite simple so far in which we have hard coded most of the things. But now let us add a functionality in the server side to provide the name of the user and the user ID so that this list can be correctly populated. So the place from where we are returning the main web page to the user, we also need to provide some additional details like user ID and the list of online users. So returning user ID would be quite simple as session user ID and to return the list of online users we haven't implemented the return function in get all logged in users in our mydb. First let's create a variable online user records which is a map with key as user record and the value is an empty list initially and inside this for loop we are going to populate this variable online user records by appending the name on the zeroth index user ID on the first, read on the second, and the write on the third. And finally, we need to return this map, online user record. Now, I guess the last thing to do over here is to convert this read and write into checked or unchecked, because that's what the HTML code will read to set the state of the switch button, which we can simply do it by writing some if else. So if read access is one, then read variable is checked, else unchecked, and the same goes for write. So looks good so far. Now this get all logged in users will gonna return a map with key as online users and the value will be a list. So now this variable name online users can be used in our index.html page by using Jinja templates. So here for example we need to get the name of the user. We would say oh no I guess first of all we need to create a for loop because we would have multiple online users. So this li represents each row of the table. So we can say as for n in online users record, which is a list. So this for loop will gonna run for the max size of the list. And to end this for loop, we will write end for right after this row ends. So now we will have multiple rows for each user. And this end represents each list inside user records. So we know that the zeroth index of this list contains the name of the user. And which index contains the user ID? Let me check. Uh, zero, 01. So yes, so the first index contains the user ID. So we can call it as 1. And also this condition checked or unchecked will also be controlled by read and write. So read is on index 2 and write is on index 3. So now everything looks in a stable condition. We can test this functionality now. Let us restart the server and watch the logs. 
which looks quite as expected. We have a list of online users. Currently, we only have one with the first switch button as read and the second one as write, the third one to apply the changes. Now, the last thing which we need to do is make sure that this control panel is only visible by admin users. So if I consider myself as an admin user, I can, or I guess I'm already sending the user ID to the client. Now we can use this user ID to add a if statement before this control panel starts as if the user ID equals my user ID. You can get this user ID by simply printing out this session user ID in the console and hard code it in your HTML code. And in the end, don't forget to end this if statement. Now let us restart our server and connect another user who is not the admin and see if he or she gets this this control access panel or not. So I have my another Facebook account with name Anam Chaudhary who is set as non-admin user. So I will be logging in into my packed IoT server from that account. As expected, he is not the admin user, so he will not get access to the access control panel. And from our admin dashboard, if I refresh the page, I would see another user named as Anam Chaudhary coming in the online list. So I have my another Facebook account with name Anam Chaudhary who is set as non-admin user. So I will be logging in into my packed IoT server from that account. As expected, he is not the admin user, so he will not get access to the access control panel. And from our admin dashboard, if I refresh the page, I would see another user named as Anam Chaudhary coming in the online list. Now let us add an endpoint for this uh, apply button that will gonna send a request from our JavaScript code to the Flask application. In our main.js, we can simply add a method that listens on any switch button which is pressed from our dashboard. It checks whether the ID of that switch button starts with access and it splits this ID into two parts uh, by dash and takes the second index of this ID, which is the ID of the user. And then we read the state of read switch and the write switch by specifying its ID. And finally sending the request as grant dash user ID dash read state dash write state. So I reverted back the send event which we were using in the first part of the project, which is simply sending the post request to the server. Now in our Flask application, we can add an endpoint to receive this request. App root, grant, user ID, read and write. So it's good to check one more time whether this request grant is coming from an admin user. I'll send the response to whoever is sending the request as access denied. If everything goes well, then access granted. Now the two things that we need to do here is first store the user read and write permissions into the database and then call the PubNub server to grant read and write access to this specific user. Now let us handle this response in our main.js. We will receive the response over here, extract the JSON, check whether it has the key as access. If the access is granted, then resubscribe on the channel again. Now it is also good to modify the subscribe method to let us know whether it has subscribed successfully or not. So this grant read and write permissions is a second step. Well, the first step that comes before this is to generate the authorization key for that specific user and store it in the database. 